What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. <laughs> Chelsea, we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking real cool in that hat. Yeah, I love dairy. <laughs> yeah. So do you. You I heart, heart dairy, too. I heart dairy a lot. We you really heart dairy, heart dairy so much. on this episode because we're going to review it chapter two. Yes. Now, we are actually recording this in the past, yeah. like further in the past than usual because uh, we have had the privilege of seeing this movie ahead of time. I mean, so today, what's the date today? The 30th Okay, of today's August, August 30th. I saw this movie, when was it? Like a week ago. And yeah, it might have been even over a week ago. Yeah. At we a did press a screening. Cool <laughs> thing with uh, Warner it Brothers. It was all, yeah. And then I saw it a second time at the premiere, yes. which was super cool in Westwood. Uh, you were unfortunately unable to make that. I needed to edit the podcast. She prioritized. Here's the thing is, the I, I pushed the podcast for like a couple weeks in a row because I was busy and. Wouldn't you know it? I was still busy, but I, I just, just, I was like, no, I, I'm not going to push that one another no. time. It was a very rough decision. It for sucked. Her. Yeah, it sucked. Uh, <laughs> we Anna, deliberated for a bit. Our buddy Anna Brizzy Voices came with me in your stead mm -hmm. and uh, she was great. And then, yeah, you missed the after party I know. where I got to talk to some, some of the actors. Who'd you, who'd you talk to? Talk to Isaiah who plays That's so adult cool. Mike, who's the fucking coolest. <gasps> Talk to the uh, the guy who plays Belch, uh, Jake. He's yeah. a very cool guy. Big fan of the channel. Yeah, what up? So yeah, if you're watching, Jake, <laughs> thanks, man. Jake like was my. Uh, <laughs> he, he was your in kind of. He really was. He he was like my my um, chaperone. Mm -hmm. He would be like, oh, here's Owen Teague who played uh, yes, Patrick Hockstetter, yeah. and and uh, yeah, it was great. That's so cool. I I guess Nick. Uh, Nicholas Hamilton is a fan of Dead Oh, Meat we've also. run into him a number of times. Yeah, we've now, run into him at like who plays Henry Bowers, a few young different Henry things. Bowers. But I love that the bullies all watch Dead Meat, yeah, and we should they cool. should be our security detail at live events. And also, uh, <laughs> here's one of my favorite things. Okay, I sit down for the screening for this premiere, and we're getting ready to start. And then I hear a kid sitting behind me, and I turn around. It's the fucking skateboard kid from this movie. Oh, skateboard kid. Which, uh, I mean, this in, this review is coming out after the movie has been released. Yes. So assuming you've seen this, you know who I'm talking about, skateboard kid, who's hilarious in he's that movie. He's so funny. And he's, like, sitting down in his seat, and I turn around. I'm like, hey, dude, you were really great in, that, in this movie that we're about to watch. And he <laughs> looks at me, and his eyes get wide, and he's like, Dead meat? <laughs> so good. Well, yes. he's what, like nine or he, something? He looks about nine or ten. Uh, he, that tracks. Dude, he partied hard at that, <laughs> at that after party. He was there when I left at like 1.30. That's amazing. Doing the karaoke. He was singing Bohemian Rhapsody. I got a picture with him right before I left, and I'll wait to post until after the movie comes out because people don't know that character yet. Yeah. But he was hilarious. Uh, yeah, it was That's great. so cool. It was really uh, cool. I had a great experience. I wish you had been there. But. I wish I was there too. Hopefully, uh, bullies from it, if you're listening to this, <laughs> let's all hang out. Yeah, as long as you don't uh, throw rocks at us. Yeah, as long as you don't like fucking carve <laughs> words into our stomachs. Man, yeah. Those are fucked up characters. I love it. Yeah. So you've seen this movie once. Yes. I've seen yes, this yes, movie yes, twice. Yes, yes. Neither of those screenings w did we have the capability of bringing in a notebook to yeah, take notes. Yeah, that's the thing with um, literally. I mean, the first screening we did, we got like the we got the ones. It was, oh, yeah. it was very it was serious. We had all our bags searched and mm -hmm. shit. And I just thought, I don't want to even if we're maybe allowed to take. I just don't want to deal with. Yeah, that maybe being a problem because mm -hmm. they, they the whole time too there were there were security guards standing watching us watch the movie. It yeah. was intense. It um, was pretty intense. And then so. yeah, at the premiere, I knew I had a thing after. I don't want to be carrying around a notebook. Yeah, so. yeah. I yeah. just uh, before we started write, uh, film recording, I wrote down from memory the plot points of this movie. I think I got it because yes, this is a long movie. It's two hours and forty five minutes. It's but long. really. 
I've seen it twice now. It doesn't feel that long to mm, me. Mm-hmm. I think it moves at a, I mean, the beginning we'll talk about moves Move, at maybe yeah. a bit too fast. It's a little too brisk, I think. But, but the thing is that you, with this movie, you have six central characters and there are at least two sequences in this movie where each of them has to do something. Yes. And so that's why it's long. You have to watch six different people go through this stuff. Mm-hmm. And when you're watching it, I don't think it feels that long because you're just like, oh, then what's the next character going to do? Right. And that's the setup of the book as well. So I've read, I I at least have the privilege of I read the book. So that's mm-hmm. what I can offer yeah. alongside of your you've seen it twice thing. Mm-hmm. By the way, it is crazy to think of where we were when we reviewed this the first it movie on dead meat i had people tweet at me saying oh i'm excited to see you guys review this because you reviewed that first one together didn't we do it when the computer was in the other literally on our like shitty webcam and i had long hair and it's just thinking of like where we were then and where we are now it's crazy so i think that this is kind of like a little moment for for sure because that that movie came out uh, in Oct- uh, September of 2017 mm-hmm. and Dead Meat started in April of 2017. Mm-hmm. So just later that first year and it, you know, it heralded a big boom in the genre. It, yeah. That, that was, was very fortunate for us. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, uh, I'm sure you can drop in a quick video clip of what we looked like in reviewing that first movie and now we have better cameras, fucking better cameras going to premieres. Warner Brothers sending us so much stuff. I like, know. We got, it's so sweet of them. Yeah. Like, history of old dairy book. And there's like a library card that has uh, we each have one. It, you yeah. have one. And our names after Mike Hamlin. And then like the tokens. Oh, yeah. Are all we'll, in it's here. cool because we can go through the tokens in the box yeah. as we go through those parts in the movie. Oh, my God. So I have some like visual aid. Yeah. Warner Brothers has been very kind to us. So yes. Thank, thank you. you, Sarah. Beth, and uh, I guess I'll always there. preface like, you know, we were always going to be honest about how we feel about a movie, um, you know, but it it is like human nature to you go to a fun event and we get to do stuff that's going to color your perception of whatever it is that you're you're watching. So it's, you know, because, yeah, people got on us about liking the nun. I understand that people who saw the nun later maybe didn't yeah. like it as much, but we watched that in an abandoned monastery at in night Mexico. in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it, yeah, we had a good yeah, time. Exactly. Right? So that, that's what I'll say right <laughs> off the bat. Um, so it chapter two, long awaited movie, huge. I'm curious to see how it'll do at the box office. I think it's going to some kill. whisperings of it, maybe being the first uh, billion dollar R rated movie. We'll see. We'll see. That's a high, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money to make. But fingers crossed. How many movies have made a billion dollars? Uh, I think both Jurassic Worlds, the wow. big ones, the big, the okay. big Marvel movies, that the would big be Disney movies. Something if this one did, because I'm thinking back to it is crazy now to imagine a world before <laughs> that first one came out where this was not everywhere and people, you know, it, it is crazy, you know, getting excited for that first one to come out and. It was, I don't know, it's just, it didn't have the feeling of, like, this is going to be a huge I don't know, movie. that trailer set records. That's true, that trailer yeah. did set records, you're right. Mm-hmm. So crazy, I think, yeah. I don't even know why. I guess, uh, I guess Tim Curry, Pennywise, has always stuck around kind of in the back of people's heads. I think people just were curious. Yeah. Like, what are we... But now Bill Skarsgård, Pennywise, is a fucking icon yeah in the two years since that first movie came out he is everywhere which is partially i think why this one doesn't feel as scary to me i agree because pennywise is so much more familiar now i agree i think that is a big issue (laughs) this one is just because that first movie was so big and because that this new pennywise is so iconic just instantly iconic um it's a good problem to have i guess like you're so familiar with him at this point, whereas going into that first movie, all we had was the bits of him you see in the trailer, maybe some, you know, the art, the artwork they released of, here's our reveal of Pennywise, which is all I had when I made my cosplay, mm-hmm. by the way. And then I saw the movie and noticed all the beautiful details on the back of the costume <laughs> that I couldn't use. Um, but it's we're like so familiar with him now and he's so everywhere. I mean, he is in a relationship with the Baba Duke. Like, you know, people ship it. It's like, he's just a thing. So when you see him in the second one, like, it, Oh, it's Pennywise. Like yeah, we all know Pennywise. Pennywise. He, he's yeah. everywhere. And it's not quite as, 
he's not as as much of a mystery. Mm-hmm. You know? And and on this note, actually, I think we should do what we normally do and give a spoiler free part of the uh, review because mm-hmm. I think we haven't been spoilerific yet. We, uh, can't, we couldn't be. Oh, I mean, it was just like in general. No, yeah, in this video. Oh, in this video, yeah. Ten we in general, so we far. couldn't be. Yeah. Also, but yeah. So, so first point that we said we don't feel as though it's as scary as no. the first one. I do think it's funnier. This movie's mm. fucking hilarious. This movie's very funny. It's very funny, and uh, I think a large part of that is due to the adult cast being very talented, funny actors. In particular, you will hear this all over the oh, place. Yeah. Bill Hader is fucking standout in yeah. this movie. And also James Ransone, and the two of them have a <sighs> tight relationship because it's Richie and Eddie, who even as children are sparring back and forth. Oh, my God. It is the adult casting in this is insanely good. That's another phenomenal point. Yeah. Uh, is everyone is doing such Everyone's a great job? Killing. Like, like all the the actors in this are good. Like everyone is solid. It's fascinating that they were able to cast people who realistically look like grown versions of the children actors, and then those actors, the adult actors they cast, are also very talented. Not only at portraying the characters, but portraying the characters as developed. By those yeah. kid actors, mm-hmm. there are many moments, especially watching it the second time, where I'm like, "Dude, they studied." It's wild how yeah. those kids played those characters in that first movie and adapted little ticks and everything. It's so good, mm-hmm. and obviously, I, I think James Ransone looks exactly it's like weird. Jack Gra- uh, Glazer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They it, look like he looks. Yeah, like, like everyone of, looks like, it, but they look. Exa- and, I think they're the one that casting that really. And also, I think it's weird at first. I was like, oh, James Mack, like interesting, but seeing him playing Bill, maybe it's just because he's so good at the mannerisms and the little ticks and stuff. But to me, he looks so much like, oh, that's that kid grown up. Yeah, and I think they really lean into it with uh, uh, with Eddie in that pharmacy scene when they have they do a dissolve. <laughs> Of their faces dissolving to one another. Because yeah. they do a lot of match cuts with the characters yeah. from young to old. But like a dissolve where it's like, oh, we just watched that character age in mm-hmm. real time. It's great. Yeah. But um, I guess like more spoiler free. I, I think it's, it's a lot of plot to cram into a movie. Mm-hmm. I think I almost would have loved to have seen this be three movies. You do then lose the kind of. I like the appeal of, okay, we have one movie that's focused on the kids and one that's focused on the adults and that, like, symmetry. But there's so much shit going on. I don't know. Yeah, I'd say the first half hour of this movie is super fast. Yeah, I think the first first act of this one's the weakest yeah and, and it I just think gets that, better which off it's like a weird that never happens yeah, usually what a, we say is the ending is the letdown yeah but this the beginning is just rushed i don't think they establish some things as well as they could have yeah. we'll discuss that more in the mm-hmm. spoiler part and also uh the very first scene mm-hmm. is is difficult to watch it's a lot um without kind you know without giving away exactly what happens if you've read the book you know what this is it opens it opens the book okay um it is purposely very disturbing and kind of sets a tone for what the story is and what we're dealing with but it's a lot and i think i am already predicting now recording this in the past (laughs) people are gonna be talking about this scene i think yeah because even at the premiere I just felt everyone uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. You know? And this was a thing where I told you this happened. uh, Before the movie began, the director, Andy Muschietti, and the cast were up front. They said some words. And then they went back to their seats. And Bill Hader's walking down the aisle that I'm sitting by. And he's like, you all have to like this because we're here. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking great. But, yeah, even during that scene with that audience, with the people who made it, it felt like people were like. That opening scene and a scene like soon after it's pretty soon after it's we're we're front loading this thing with like uncomfortable things because yeah. the first one has a hate crime and the the second one we're talking about is domestic abuse domestic violence and, and it's, it's, they're both graphic it's and very hard yeah so there's that as much as we can talk about it without you know giving specifics away just be aware that that stuff <laughs> that's going on in this and I, I already have a feeling that by the time this moved like that's gonna be discourse on the twitter and yeah we can else. discuss that uh yeah yeah we'll, 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 talk, we'll yeah. talk about it yeah um and uh, i guess anything else uh 
there oh yeah it had some native mysticism yeah there's yeah there's some of that there i mean that's in the book too it's oh yeah well, it's, it's stephen different king stephen king it is yeah stephen king does that and um i don't feel qualified to say whether or not it's handled well yeah i don't either so i'll just leave it at that it is present in this movie yeah it's yeah um but other i mean i think flaws aside and and the fact that i don't I don't think it's as good of a film as the first one because the first one's so standalone. Okay, yeah. Um, This one, though, just like the emotional payoff of everything (sighs) is so good and so well done and to me is really in the spirit of the book that that to me is what really matters and that's why I'm generally really favorable. Like I, I view this movie favorably and I like it. Yeah. The important things it gets right and it does them so well. And uh, I cried multiple times near the end. Yeah. Just face. Oh wet. yeah. You're going to cry. Yeah. Just bring just tissues. Fucking bawling. <laughs> yeah. And I love it when a movie can make me do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would highly recommend you see it. Yeah. Let's see it in theaters. Let's get Let's get a horror movie past that big old billion mark. Fuck Holy it. Holy shit. Let's do it. If we're doing if, we're, if other movies are getting that big, let's have a horror movie do <laughs> right, it. If we're at that point. Yeah, whatever. Fuck it. Uh, but yeah, go see it. If you if you like the first one, you should like this. I don't think anyone who saw the first one and loved it is going to see this and be pissed off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think I saw some reviews where people were... Some people said they were disappointed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. But- well, like, like I said... Uh, we're just being as honest as we can. Mm-hmm. I think I even maybe liked it a little more than you. I think you might have, which I'm surprised. Yeah, because you... like, and I'm not saying it's a perfect movie. And we'll discuss it, but like, yeah, watching it a second time, I was very happy to be watching I it. Wanna, I would watch it a third time. I do want to see it a second time. Yeah. Very badly. All right, let's do spoilers. Yeah. Let's go through. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't seen it and you're worried about getting spoiled, stop listening, come back later after you've seen it. Yeah. Okay? Uh, so yeah, that opening scene opens in present day which i think is a complication uh at the canal days festival in Derry, where a gay couple is attacked beaten savagely like i mean we're talking the like they are it's violent um like it's a lot many punches to the face and kicks to the face it's yeah it's a kid is doing it to him too, which also makes it like feel worse that yeah. this kid is. This is a drawn out scene. It's brutal here. It's brutal in the book. It sucks, um, but it does. You know, it, it's the purpose it's serving in the book and here is to kind of set up. This is the this is the horror of a small town, and not that this is unique to small towns we can find hatred everywhere but it's you know this or that is... all small towns do it exactly yeah, or that yeah. this is the kind of stuff that you know behind the veneer of like oh it's the dairy days carnival and it's all fun and but dairy has has secrets and dairy has a dark side and the fact that we're opening up this story with that is Stephen king is telling you right away like this is the kind of shit this town is hiding and it has you know the potential for the evil that dairy has the potential for and the evil that pennywise feeds off of i think it you know a scene like this where pennywise the guy who like he falls into the room and he thinks someone's there to maybe save him because he sees fucking penny that's, that's the last person you want to see if you're like you're Those drowning and you're like, like oh, oh wow God. there's someone there to help me but it's fucking pennywise that sucks but Pennywise is feeding off the fear of this guy who's, you know, it, it's so dark. Yeah. yeah. I have uh, three thoughts about this scene. One is that it does tie into what you said is subtext in the book, but made overt yes, in this we movie. Get subtext made text here. Which... Although I think in the book, maybe I haven't read it, but in the miniseries, it kind of feels like Eddie is a coded gay character or a possibly closeted I, gay character. It's been a, it, it, this, this is such a downside to, so like when we recorded our part one review, I just finished the book and yeah. now I'm like a few years out, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. It is Eddie who we get kind of in his head and it's from his POV and he, he definitely has feelings for, for Richie and there's, there's something there. It's, it's, I would say, yeah, subtext, but 
here we get some of that made text. Yeah, with Richie yes. being uh, revealed to be, I guess, closeted. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's dropped throughout a bunch of the movie. I think first in the uh, reunion at the, the Jade of the Orient Chinese restaurant mm-hmm. where they're like, Richie didn't get married. And mm-hmm. it's played off as a joke. But they're yeah, it's like, oh, Richie never got married. And then... Um, when he's going around and trying to collect his token, you get the flashback where he's at the arcade and he wants the one kid to like stay with him. Yeah. And like, that could be not gay at all, even though it's turn like uh, Henry walks up and insinuates is gay. But then right after that, you have Pennywise uh, tormenting Richie Telling and saying, him, I know your secret. And then, and, then, she, and, and then the mascot in the background is waving. What a oh, weird I love scene. It. I love with it. This, like fucking, pyramid upside down pyramid of balloons yeah. as he's floating down and like walking towards it's him great. it's great visually and awesome yeah so like you know the opening sets up pennywise for if that makes sense later that pennywise knows this is something to use against someone it like really makes him that much more sinister the yeah. fact that he's like aware of that kind of prejudice and is able to use it against people is fucked but then there is as much as i i, I think that scene serves a narrative purpose. There is the fact that it's really hard to watch and a little gratuitous in the violence. I think a little, yeah, I I think um, it's going to be too much for many people. I will Um, say that it's good that you get a feel for those characters as people before it happens. You do. Yeah. It's, you really like them because he, he wins the the prize and then he gives it to Vicky, who is Little another girl, yeah. a tragic character. Yeah. And, you know, they love each other. They're, they they want to get out of there. Like, it's I re- really like those characters in the short amount of time that we get with them before it happens. I also thought it was funny that he insults one of them by saying, like, Meg Ryan wants her wake back or something. And then later in the movie theater, I think there's a. You've got mail poster. There is. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Which I Tom thought Hanks was kind of a funny. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's uh, we obviously talked a lot about this opening scene. It's a hell of a way to open a movie. And like you said, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion about it. Yeah. Uh, I hope that people who see it uh, can, I don't want to say get past it, but like experience the rest of the movie on its own merits. Mm-hmm. Uh, Without just thinking about that the whole time because i i could i could easily see a situation where you know because that scene and that struggle that's for is not my life experience Mm -hmm. therefore it does not affect me the way it might affect someone else watching them but i could easily see a situation where someone like watches that opening scene and that's all they can think about the rest of the movie because it's so graphic and yeah yeah and i guess i take back saying i hope that they can experience their you know Every, any, everyone's experience is valid and their own. So, right. uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. A very intense way to open the the movie. Thankfully, it's not like that the whole time. Yeah. Uh, the death of that man thrown into the river and then eaten on the side by Pennywise, uh, uh, that spurs Mike to realize who has stayed in Derry this whole yes. time. Mike Hamlin, now Crucial played Crucial by... to realize Mike has been in Derry this whole time. Yes, I love that Mike's role is much bigger in this movie. There are still a few times where I feel like he's left out, but uh, he's played so he's well so by I, by uh, Old Spice guy, Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah Washington is so good in this. And I, I tweeted about this already, but I'm so... I'll be really sad if he gets kind of overlooked in the conversation about this movie, which I could see. I could see happening, um, not because he's not great. I think he's one of the best parts of this movie, but it's just his role is very grounded and it has to be um he is a lot more low-key than someone like Richie you know he's he's not the big um like he's not the big like kind of flashy role like the kind of look at me character because again Richie or I, they're always the center of attention because they crave attention you know yeah, yeah. whereas Mike is very reserved and but he is such like he really grounds this group as adults and he 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 balances so well like what makes Mike really interesting because you really buy at first you know Mike is, you instantly trust him he's really smart and over the course of the movie that kind of veneer chips away and you realize how affected he has been by staying in Derry for 27 years and by 
just it's this research has clearly taken over his life and you realize the extent to which he's manipulated his friends to get them to all come back here and that almost like betrayal not betrayal but just they all realize they've kind of been used or lied to lied to yeah he outright he lies, lies to, to them, them about, yeah. you know and 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 he plays that so well this like simultaneously really stable seeming dude versus someone who's like falling apart inside and is really desperate yeah he's playing a guy who's putting up a front and it, it plays he's it very great. well yes yeah there's a lot of vulnerability he's really really there. good so i just want to like give his performance some attention i just worry it'll get lost because it's so you know yeah he's the glue that is holding it together and often those roles don't get the attention they should yeah but he begins to call the other losers mm -hmm. and tell them it's time to come home we made a promise uh to each other that if this thing comes back looks like it has mm -hmm. gotta come back and fight it so this is when he starts calling everyone and we get a just rapid fire reintroduction to the characters here's one thing that i feel they need to do better or should have done better anyway is uh establish how they all forgot yes that they're even I agree. from dairy yeah the, the fact that they're all weirdly successful is the thing oh, in the yeah, book that doesn't even that get doesn't touched on mm -hmm. in this movie because at least they do mention with bev she's like i don't even really remember it like i feel like they could have clarified it a little more yeah the thing is so the thing is is in the book and in the movie i just think they don't do a great job of establishing it again because this they have to do so much in mm -hmm. this one and this is what we're talking about with this first half is it's like a lot of stuff and it's fast uh they all except for mike because he stays in dairy they all forget when they leave Derry, they don't remember Pennywise. They, forget they don't everything. remember each other. Mm -hmm. They forget all of it. And it's not just because they were kids. And it's like, no, they, this is like magic. Like they literally, it's like some supernatural yeah. Bill something. Bill Hader says outside the restaurant, I only remember that I grew up in Derry a few hours ago. Like they yeah. forgot where they, yes. literally where they it, came from. It is like something made them forget. Yeah. This is like some, it's supernatural. It's weird. Like, it's not just people forgetting because they're getting older. Like, no, no, no. Their parts of their brains have been like erased and, and they don't remember. And they do, I, I think eventually it does get that point across, especially at the end because you have uh, Bill asking Mike, why aren't we forgetting like last time? Right. But I think it needs to have been established better up top. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, like you said, they are all unusually successful mm -hmm. and i think there is one line of dialogue in the miniseries that addresses that like how do you guys think that happened no acknowledgement of that in this so it's a little weird and i could see someone watching this and being like you're telling me all six of these people went off and been yeah it's like and it that's is a not supernatural them being thing. like really successful isn't like out and out explained in the book not no. that i remember but i always kind of interpret it as like it's another way to keep them away from dairy the fact oh, okay. that they're all successful, like... Don't give them a reason to come back. Exactly. Yeah. Like, don't get, you know, it doesn't want a reason for them to come back. And I don't know if he had a hand in making this, but, like, it's something. It's the universe doing So that weird. that's another, actually, point of confusion I have. Does Pennywise slash it slash whatever want them to come back? Because he's writing on under the bridge, come home. Um, It's a little confusing that's a, to me. I can't see in this. I just, I haven't read the book in so long now right. i forget what his we shouldn't have I think to rely might, on your book i think he you know? is taunting is he taunting mike maybe i'm not mike sure. is the one who sees although it. i don't know yeah i think he no i think the thing is, is like he maybe does want them to come back because to he, yeah he's it, it like drives him so crazy that these kids bested him i think yeah. so I, maybe it's the yeah. opposing force that has uh, influenced their success something the yeah turtle or whatever which is again only hinted at in this movie oh, yeah, just we'll with some shots of turtles um yeah i don't know the, the success thing is like very weird and like but you know it's, yeah it's all very unnatural i wish it was explained a little bit more yeah, so everyone has a strong reaction uh, to Mike calling them and telling them to come home. Eddie gets in a car accident. Eddie has married his mother, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. says, I love you, Mom. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill is a writer on a this movie. This is so great. His wife, played by Jess Wexler from Teeth, is a very tiny role compared to the book and the miniseries, yes. wherein she was played by... Uh, uh, oh, um, Olivia Hussey. I was going to say like Julia and she's always Juliet to me. <laughs> uh, she's always nurse 
<laughs> nurse from Ice Cream Man to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, she only has the one scene in this movie, which yeah. is a little disappointing. But it makes sense it with makes... how they streamlined it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you said Bev's husband also follows them to Derry yes, in the book. Yes, he does. Which doesn't happen in the miniseries. Uh, I'm fine with those two characters being left behind. Yeah. I, I did love um when we see his wife. Because the whole thing is, so kind of like Eddie married his mom, um, Bill marries Bev, <laughs> like yeah, essentially. Yeah, I still think they should have had Amy Adams in the role I, to that really funny, drive yeah. that home. Um, but I, I do love that, even though that's not really a big part of this movie, it does, we do get like a visual cue to kind of make you, if you catch it, you really see that, oh, wow, he did, kind of, he he married Bev. Because his, his wife is an actress and she's acting in this movie uh, that he wrote the book that this is like based on. The director is Peter Bogdanovich. Um, <laughs> but uh, she is literally dressed like Bev and is covered in blood. Yeah, like and the bathroom scene in the first she one. Look, yeah, I mean, she she's dressed up like Bev yeah. in the first movie. And it's we a nice even, touch. I think the first kid we see is Bev. She's like floating. That's like the, one of the first shots we see in the second one. Oh, yeah. One. It and I think it is like that. kind of a, so you kind of remember exactly what she looks like. And then we see his wife and it's mm -hmm. like, they look the fucking same. So yeah. you at least, you know, there's a hint to that plot in the book that is for this is not there and that scene also begins the running joke of bill can't write endings yeah. which is a nod towards stephen king uh often criticized for his, his endings, endings which doesn't mean his books are any less enjoyable to read they're still great this, but this it is a book that is criticized for its ending my favorite thing is that this is a fucking runner of a joke everyone keeps making fun of bill for not being able to write endings and you begin to think maybe in the back of your head is stephen king okay with everyone shitting on him then the stephen king cameo happens yeah which is excellent and bill is the stephen king stand-in he's a writer so he's oh, the yeah. stephen it's, king character in this. he's like one of the most obvious author stand-ins and it's i great. i think it's Actually, the last time that a crack about writing endings is made is uh, Stephen King himself playing the bike shop owner or the pawn shop owner being like, can't write endings. Yeah. Like, he says it himself. It's, it's like, oh, King's in good. on it. Stephen King, at this age, he is now in, in this role, has like fucking Walter Frey energy. Oh, my God. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You can afford it. <laughs> yeah, like you're you're rich you can afford like he just has like <laughs> yeah he is like walter Frey. i can't think of how else to describe him just yeah. like crotchety old man i love it it's great it was an awesome cameo and uh very unexpected i didn't know ahead of time that he was gonna have a cameo yeah it's like an extended scene that yeah i i was i was laughing though like his cameo of course I, we saw it at a press screening so it's like all these fucking press people like oh steven yeah. <laughs> but my favorite is the Peter Bogdanovich cameo was all these like, I'm assuming film journalists like, oh, we're all gonna like, <laughs> just to, like we all know who this is. What is he directed? Um, 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 the last picture show. Oh, okay, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, yeah. But it was just funny, like, like, oh yeah, we all, I know who this is. We I, all know. I who didn't. This. We're film people. You did. <laughs> You're smart. Uh, yeah. Richie is a comedian. Uh, he has a funny like walking through the backstage scene where he's like, I need, I need vodka or no, I need a rum. And then they give it to him. That was fast. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. He goes out and kind of bombs. Cause he's so confused. Mm -hmm. There's, I forget. I'm glad he's a stand up in this one. It's so funny. Oh, like yeah. seeing in each iteration of it, <laughs> how that character has to have a different job. Cause what is he in the book? He's a, he's like a shock job. Like he's a radio DJ. And then in the mini series, he's like a he's late, a late night, night comedian. Host, yep. Uh, and then in this, he's like he's, Comedy Central presents yeah, he is. or like Netflix he, he's special. He's like, um, yeah, like Louis C.K. kind of like, yeah. I'm a depressed guy, comedian. Oh, yeah, Masturbator's of. Anonymous, I guess it really is Louis C.K. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I, think, I yeah. didn't even catch that. Yeah, that's his one joke that he we He literally get, does make that, that joke. It's a masturbation joke. Ooh, that's funny. Uh, Bev is a clothes designer with a closet full of shoes. Uh, nice she closet. almost has as many shoes as we do. <laughs> you have that's, that's you that's a you problem Stitch fix keep sending them and i keep liking them i'm sorry yeah but bev that's the scene with the domestic abuse yeah God, he like punches here's the, the thing face. with this is i was like as the scene was happening i'm like this is really fucking graphic but if it pays off later i'll be okay with it 
but I don't think it does. You don't think it does? No, because we have that whole plot taken out. Yeah. Her abusive husband. Yeah. And uh, so I'm not really sure why we needed it if we're not going to use him at all. That's true. Because he represents. um, Like her father? He represents. Yeah. He represents her father. He represents her. Like him, him juxtaposed with Ben, especially like her letting herself love someone who doesn't hurt her and her realizing that it's like the first healthy relationship she's ever had is with Ben and that juxtaposition between, yeah, Ben and the husband is really powerful and she, yeah, gets to be with someone who would never hurt her and, um, but it's, cause yeah, he, in the, in the book, he's the one who kidnaps, um, Aubrey, yes, Audrey, the what? Yeah. yeah, Bill's wife. Yeah, and I'm trying oh. to kind of remember. There's no "Don't you want it" scene. No, <laughs> there's not. It's, I, I'm like trying. It's, it's also vague. Like I don't really remember now. But he, he is a character. Like he follow. He goes to Derry. And, oh wow. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a thing. Um. Yeah. Uh. They do a crazy transition. Uh. She's walking out down the street to like leave to go back to Derry, and it, I think it goes up into the stars. Oh, this was cool. And then it zooms in, and it's a puzzle piece that uh, like adult this. Stan is putting in, and it's on like a glass table too. Yeah. Stan is just looks like a little homebody. I don't even know what he does. He. But they're um, rich. They're talking about. They're their wealthy. Travel yeah. Plans. I forget yeah. what his job is but he he i think he's he's the first character you meet in the book oh is stan he's like the first chapter you read um after the the fucking opening um he's the first of the losers you meet i'm pretty sure but yeah he gets but yeah he like has the most normal like it seems like it. Yeah, and I the think that least that's showy, important. Least he has like the most stable the life and life. the safest yeah. life. He has the most to lose and yeah. Yeah, so with that phone call, he uh you know, if you know the story, he commits suicide. I think it's actually less graphic in this it, than this the miniseries. Is, it's done well in this. I I was I think after the opening scene and the Bev scene, I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh man, what's this going to be?" I was like bracing myself for it cuz I hate shit like this in movies. It's not, I hate watching it. Um but you really you don't it's it, 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 it's like before and after yeah it, you see the razor on the side of it and then you see him like bleeding and you don't even get like the open wounds no, it's just like it's, the tub is red yeah I, th- I think it's that's done really well you get the point oh don't... actually you know what this transitions into bev because it has the blood splattering from his mm. wrist and then splatters onto her face lying in bed yeah so i forget what transitions into him with the stars but uh, I think after Bev is the reveal that Henry Bowers is still alive. He's coming out the water pipe with a bunch of dead bodies. Yes, yeah, so this is back in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. They don't like, they're just like, now we're back. And yeah. you just got to catch on. Yeah. It's not that hard. No. You can keep up. Uh, yeah. Henry Bowers goes back home as a kid, gets punched in the face by his uh, cop dad's cop friends for mm. killing his cop dad. And he is also, um, I don't think i i don't i forget if this was implied or like explained in the movie but he is then blamed for all the kid murders i don't know uh i don't remember that being yeah uh explicated that's like in why this he, movie. he killed his dad yeah but also they're like oh he must have murdered all these kids and you know what there's that deleted scene from the first one where you see belch and vic dead in his car because he killed them too yeah. it also those characters don't get addressed at all in this uh this movie i know that andy muschietti has plans uh to put together one giant love, seven I hour it. i want it director's cut of i, I, I want, want that it. now yeah i would fucking watch that yeah because we never got that first movie came out on blu-ray and then they're like there will be a director's cut with that scene at it, and we never got it. Yeah. And I know that he wants it to happen. <sighs> it, it Shit gets tied up, you know? I would love to, like, as a project, and I would never have the time to do this, but it'd be so fun to, like, get that director's cut. And I don't know, I'm assuming, will it just be everything, basically, like, first movie, then second movie with, like, scenes added in? It'd be real fun to edit it in the order that like, the book is. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, on the book order? Yeah, so okay. it opens with, the carnival and oh, then we meet each of the adults and then we do a bunch of stuff with them as kids and then it goes back to them as a you know that can be your uh who edited to the oh i think is, is it, it Topher, Topher grace, grace did like a crazy ass cut of star of wars just all of star wars yeah <laughs> that's great mm-hmm. uh yeah i i do want to pause and ask you what you think about i have seen criticisms of this movie having too many flashbacks too many 
remember the first movie. Do you feel that way? I do a little bit. Okay. Um, I, I did not like that this movie opens with previously on it. What, with the shot of Bev floating yeah. in the deadlights? Well, that and they we have to see the Oh, the promise blood, again, prom- yeah. Which... Oh, I, dude, that shot of the glass going into the Oh, that sucks. That's so gross. Ooh. But I just... There's there's so many times that that happens, and I don't need it. It does happen a lot. I think I was all right with it. I feel like... I think I'm just comparing it to the opening of... Because that is like the literal very first thing in this, is it's like previously on it. Mm-hmm. Previously yeah. on it. And I think maybe I'm just thinking of that compared to the impact of the beginning of the first one where it's you don't need to set up anything like that. we're going right into it's raining out and georgie has his boat and it's that whole scene and it's fucking awesome like, that's a kick-ass way to start a movie this mm-hmm. i'm like oh it's like a recap of you know it, it's just i wish we could be trusted and i wonder how much of this was a director decision versus a studio just i don't know but like I felt I, I wish that there was a bit more trust in the audience to re- remember stuff. Because when we spoke to Andy Muschietti at one of the cool Warner Brothers events that we did, yeah. he uh, said, and again, we're very fortunate that we were able to do stuff like that. Yeah. But he told us, uh, make sure you watch the first one right before you watch the second one. And we didn't have the time to do that. We didn't have the opportunity. And I didn't feel as though it was that necessary. And now maybe if we had, I would have noticed more little things. But I think... There's a little bit of hand-holding uh, for people who saw it two years ago, have, haven't have rewatched it, and right. are now going to see this yeah, one. Yeah, I would like to see a, a cut of this that doesn't have that. Because I don't, I, I don't think you need it. Mm-hmm. I would have rather had more time explaining why they forgot everything. Yeah. What, it, what exactly is happening when they all come back and start to remember stuff? Because mm-hmm. I think that's all a little bit yeah, weird. Rushed, and. Yeah. Uh, adult Henry Bowers is shown to us in a psych ward played by Teach, Teach Grant, yeah. who uh, I know from Leprechaun Origins, that horrendous Leprechaun reboot where he was fucking great. Yeah. He, yeah. He put in a great performance. As soon performance. as you said, dude, he was that guy from the Leprechaun, and I knew instantly. He was like the son who had like the ethical dilemmas about what. Yeah. It, yeah. He was awesome. Yeah, and so I was that. excited when he was cast. You th- said that you think adult Henry Bowers is isn't scary enough i wish they gave him either a little more time because to me adult henry at least book wise feels like such a taking time bomb where it's almost like the first one where they're so focused on pennywise but like you have this undercurrent this background of like but there's also these fucking psychotic bullies hunting them and they're almost scarier than the fucking clown and that's how he feels in the adult phase of when they're in dairy is he is let loose by pennywise and he is truly fucking crazy and like scary mm-hmm. and his inner world is like a nightmare to read and experience and he i don't i don't know like the whole time i'm reading that book while he's out running around i i'm freaked out cuz he's such a fucking loose cannon and I, I just wish that there was a bit more tension to him being out and about. You kind of forget that he's like running around until he shows up at the the townhouse and then he, he's he's like easily yeah dispatched whereas I feel like in the book he feels like more of a threat. Like he is an actual scary threat and okay. You know, because Mike almost dies, and that's why. And I, I, I am glad that they they changed at least this, and maybe this is why he's not as fucking scary in this one as Mike gets so injured by uh, Henry that he ends up in the hospital. Yeah, he's not in he that last part. He is not in the last. I think part that of tracks the with the uh, the miniseries too. Yes. Yeah. He's... So that could be why he is made Henry's made to be a lot less. Because I'd rather in this. have Mike around. I'd and rather have Mike around too. With the changes they make with this, with the whole uh, ritual, he needs. He to has be there. to be there. Yeah. yeah. So it's that could that could explain why Henry okay. isn't as much of like a fuck a, a threat because you know you make him scarier and more powerful, and then he almost kills Mike, and then mm-hmm. Mike isn't there for the finale and that sucks so i don't know yeah uh teach grant does some great work mimicking the little uh ticks that nicholas hamilton developed Mm -hmm. as the younger version of the character uh second time watching it 
when he stabs Eddie in the face in the townhouse and then gets stabbed through the curtain shower, which is a great, uh, yeah. like Eddie, like just laughing and sneaking behind this shower curtain is so funny. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he stabs Henry Bowers in the chest. The way that teach grant acts there just looks exactly like how Nicholas Hamilton yeah. plays the character. It's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't get any Mr. Moon clown yeah. uh, in this, but I did notice in Henry's like room in the psychiatric ward, there are drawings of the moon that he's been drawing. I love it. So that's yeah. great. He gets his knife back from zombie Vic who helps mm. him break out. And then I love the shot of zombie Vic waiting in the driver's seat so of the car. So good. And they, slumped they over. fucking peel off together. Yeah. I thought that was so funny. And he's like slumped over like a dead corpse until Henry gets in the car and is like, punch it. And then he like jerks Fuck, the yeah. life and they drive off. I loved it's it. Awesome. I don't even care if anyone thinks that was stupid or like too funny. for Like it was so good. I just like the idea of like, this fucking zombie pulling up in this shitty ass car and like just <laughs> ripping away with his old buddy. It's so, I think it's so funny. I kind of wish we had gotten the dog head, uh, <laughs> the dog head security when he's, card. Yeah. When yeah. he's leaving the mm-hmm. hospital, but you I know. do, there was, and again, it's, it's stuff where I'm like, Oh, we don't, like it's if it's like over explaining stuff. That's always a pet peeve of mine. But I don't need Henry saying my knife when he looks at his knife. Sure, whatever. just think, you yeah. know. That's like a writing style, I guess. Mm-hmm. But it's like eh, I don't know. Yeah. After they peel out, the losers, adult losers, meet up at Jade of the Orient, the dairy's premier Chinese restaurant. Oh yeah, the Miyuanka Chinese food <laughs> go to Dairy, dairy Maine. Mm. <laughs> I love that. You could have told me they filmed that in the exact same spot they filmed the miniseries when I would have been like, yep, that seems correct. <laughs> They're just missing that fucking song that they played I during the I swear there is a shot. They like do an overhead shot of all the, f- and I'm like, I swear that's in the miniseries. It, well, the miniseries just have tons of dissolves. It of is like, so yeah, weird. The miniseries, so long. that scene in the miniseries feels like part of Too Many Cooks. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's so weird. <laughs> it's awkward. There's a hilarious moment when Eddie is like, look at these guys. And then just like awkward silence. <laughs> yeah. James Ransone's Eddie is so angry during this. He's like, fuck you. That's not funny. F- oh, my mom was a big fat oh, yes. lady. Yes, my mom was a, a large woman. Thank you. Yeah, when Bill Hader is like, I, she sometimes leans over and is like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. A fucking Java reference. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great. I and know. yeah, this is when they're Eddie's starting so to funny. remember some stuff. Starting yes, to think and, back. Oh, I just wish this was all a little bit more telegraphed. See, this is the stuff I'm like, I wish <laughs> we over explained it. The fact that they literally did not remember anything. Mm-hmm, but they start to remember Pennywise. Mm-hmm. And then they get little fortune cookie messages, mm-hmm. which is like a fun kind of funny scene where they're trying to figure out what it means. Like, I I actually lo- I I thought this was a really effective moment because they're like, oh, we're like, where's Stan? Stan's on oh, whatever. He must have chicken now. Fuck mm-hmm. him, whatever. And they don't really I think only Bev is like has an inkling that something is off. And so they each have a fortune cookie and they're trying to like arrange them because they each have one word and it's like guess guess cut, not could it. it could not it cut and guess so they're like cut. what the fuck so they're just trying to and it none of the none of the arrangements make sense and this whole time Bab is just holding hers and then she she like is crying and she puts hers down and of course it's a Stan so yeah it looks guess like Stan Lee couldn't or, yeah, cut guess it Stan couldn't cut it or yeah. something and that's when they all kind of just instinctively know that Stan's dead. And, and then we get the crazy fortune cookie monsters. <laughs> oh, so yeah. this is, oh my God, I forgot about these. <laughs> this is like the first use of CG in the movie, which I think there's more CG in this than the first one. I think so too. There's a bunch yeah. of CG. Uh, it didn't bother me too much. Maybe I'm just biased because I like the movie. <laughs> yeah. It. I mean, yeah. I think there were a few instances where I didn't like it. And when didn't you like it? Um, I didn't like the Mrs. Kirsch monster. Yeah, I'll agree with that. The big, tall, mm-hmm. uh, swinging boobs and swinging limbs. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, she pops up too later in the water because mm-hmm. she drags Bev down when they're adults. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. But um, I did really like the weird baby head on the. Is it baby had made it for me? The little flying bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the baby had made it bug. for me. <laughs> I like the eyeball. Yeah. And the bat wing. Yeah. Those were fine. Yeah. And I do. I love that they're all freaking the fuck out and like someone smashing a chair on a table and then the waitress comes in and they're like just, yeah. ra- as far as she can know, they're fucking just raging in this yeah. 
Chinese there, there was the the singing heads in the fish tank too. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's a, a big chaotic scene. It's kind of fun. Uh, I don't remember when this Vicky scene is in relation to all the others, but it's kind of like its own little vignette. Vicky, the little girl with the birthmark oh. at the baseball game because it's a Stephen King story. It's, yeah, we gotta have some baseball. So we need some baseball. Oh man, Vicky yeah. follows a little firefly below the bleachers and runs across Pennywise who's hiding in the dark. And she's smart at first. She says, you're not my friend. You're scary. If you were my friend, you wouldn't be hiding in I the dark. I love this scene. This scene is incredible. It's, it's really good. Maybe Bill's best work yes. out of either, or I'm, except the, the opening scene, the first one yeah. with Georgie. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm so glad that this was written in, not just to show like, okay, it's back and it's, it's preying on the kids of the town to like really drive that home, but also just so we can see Phil Skarsgård like actually do a fucking scene as Pennywise. So and it's good. so good. This is like the most he's ever talked. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that, like this and the Georgie scene are like, oh, so such good, good Pennywise scenes. Because here he he turns that around as a strength of like, oh, well, I hide because people don't like my face. Oh, I think I think this scene makes you remember how fucking evil it is. How easily and how, he'll take advantage of it. Yeah, he's not a fun clown. Yeah, and how... Um, <laughs> He don't give a fuck about <laughs> kids or any, you know, he'll do whatever it takes to, you know. Yeah. And that little girl does such kids. a good job of the realization of like, oh, he's like me because people make fun people of me. People make fun of me because she birthmark. has like a, she has like a, um, like a, it's a port, Wa- wine, port stain, wine stain. Yeah. Um, birthmark. And uh, yeah. So and he's like, oh, how broad away. Yeah. <laughs> he's like one, two, you have to say so. Rah! Yeah. Crazy bite. Yeah, oh, chomps man. on her. It sucks. Oh, that poor girl. But yeah, Bill Skarsgård's so good. It's a it's a phenomenal scene. I think it's a standout. And in I this just movie. Wait, I just want that scene like out of context, up until he like basically chomps her face off. Just her, <laughs> you know, them being friends, <laughs> and her being like, "I'll be your friend," Penny, and him being like, "Oh, everyone makes fun of me because I'm so scary." And then they're like, you know, sweet little buds. Yeah, and that's it. The that'd end. be nice. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Nope. <laughs> Uh, so after the Chinese restaurant, most of the losers head back to the inn, intending to the, the townhouse, intending to leave. They're freaked out. They don't want this yeah, shit. Yeah, because now they've remembered Pennywise. And again, I wish it was clear that like they didn't remember who Pennywise was. Because I think when they're like answering the phones, some of them were like, they say stuff like, oh, it's back. Or like, we have to go. Yeah, I think he says it's back. Yeah. And so then, then later that's it's like. a little confusing. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, then. Whoa. What did they think was back? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Uh, Richie is the the driving force behind the people wanting to leave, mm-hmm. but uh, everyone is pretty eager to get out of there. But Bill agrees to go with Mike back to the library in which he lives. Which again, it's weird that in the first movie they gave Ben the library stuff. It is we. I I will say it's at least nice that in this one they gave a lot of stuff in the books that weirdly Ben and Bill do to mike oh like what um discovering the ritual of chude oh is something that bill does and i there's something that ben does oh i guess it's like ben gets the idea to do to like smoke out their clubhouse so they can all like trip and learn about pennywise and we get like a version of that kind of when they're kids or adults adults um right no when they're kids really yeah (laughs) I was like, oh, are they going to do that in this one? Uh, <laughs> but no, then we, we get a version of that where it's just Mike and Bill and he like doses. <laughs> yeah, he Mike, let, or micro he doses. doses. Bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we get we at least get and it's like Mike's idea. And it's so I think weirdly he gets more stuff to do in this one, which is nice, it would just but. it just is weird that he in this movie, he's the one who lives in the library and studies there. But that scene from the first movie with Ben was originally the Mike character. So it's weird. With him being like, this is all my research about dairy. Yeah. yeah. So it's weird that they gave it to Ben in the yeah. first movie. And I mean, Ben is the character also in the books that like, he also spends a ton of fucking time at the library. Oh, like okay. that's like, he like basically lives at the library, but he, oh. he's not the one who's like history of dairy. Like, Got it. yeah. Mike okay. is the one who's all into that. So yeah, Mike microdoses Bill and mm. uh, makes him see what he saw when he visited. Uh, I didn't get the tribe's name. Shit. Oh, I didn't either. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, it yeah. basically is like, I visited some natives and we tripped and I learned about what it 
is. Yeah, because they dealt with him before. Yeah, because it has been here since the beginning of time, pretty much. Oh, no. At least millions millions of of years. years. Okay. (laughs) But it's been here a long fucking time. It was like a scary bird instead of a clown for the the natives. Yeah, which is a hint to... For Mike, it's a scary bird in the books. Oh. It, you know. Oh, interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he tells Mike that they taught him how to defeat it. They yes. need to do a ritual. The ritual of Chud. Don't look at the fourth side of this uh, this thing that I have. Yeah, this little this leather process. bucket that yeah. we use for the ceremony. Don't look at the fourth side. Don't look side. at the fourth side. You it's don't fine. Need it. It's fine. Oh. You don't get a glimpse of the fourth side until later when I think Richie sees it and Mike like snatches it back and is like, uh oh, what yeah, was that? Sounds weird. Uh, yeah, the ritual of of. Chude. It is even weird to hear that name being said in this because I don't think that's brought up at fucking all in the mini series. It's something in the books that, like, reading that book, it, you're thinking, how the fuck would you adapt this for the screen? Because it's insane. It is like quintessential, like, 80s Stephen King. You're just like, what the fuck, man? Because that's, if you haven't read Stephen King, like, I, I think people don't realize how. Um, super. Uh, not even. It's like we're getting like mad. macroverse shit and like cosmology and like yeah, weird like big universe stuff, yeah. like creation of the universe, weird like Lovecraftian. It's very weird, and so the ritual of Chud is part of that. The ritual of cannibalistic humanoid underground yeah, dwellers. Yeah, should. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so this is the native mysticism that we mentioned earlier. Uh, yeah. This is also CG heavy. It's very. It reminded me a little. I didn't mind it. No, it I kind of stylized. Liked, I like. Yeah, I kind of liked it. Yeah. Um, it reminded me. Don't chew on that. Stop. We just got that. <laughs> Lucy. Lucy, no. Um, it reminded me a little bit of like that one scene in the last Harry Potter where it's just like animated insert to explain stuff. And it's like kind of weird stylized animation. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. I liked it. Basically the ritual of truth in the movie (laughs) is uh, you, you stand in a circle and it's, everyone has like a a totem or like something Uh, that like, it means some, it it, like represents when they encountered it kind of right. Or like, it's like their essence kind of, I think it's, or no, you know what? I think maybe it's, it's more of like what symbolizes their attachment to the group. They're like guess. losers club. Cause the, when they go to collect the tokens, it's like, why can't we go collect them together? We were together that whole summer. No, we weren't. Cause there's that time jump mm-hmm. in the original movie mm-hmm. after they have the fight outside of Nebel yeah. street and it skips over a month or so. And so they're like, we were separate during that time. We need to go find tokens related to that time, but the tokens aren't. They're related to other times that, like you said, connect them to the group. So, hmm. yeah, I don't know, man. The token thing works for me though as a as a simple screenwriting device. Yeah, and it, yeah, as as an adaptation of what the ritual is in the book. Yep, it makes a lot more sense, and it also gives the impetus for them to all split up, like they do in the book, to encounter it on their own okay. again as adults. That's like a thing that we got in the book. Each person is going and seeing it again as, as an adult. This fulfills the purpose of both being the ritual and the reason that they all split up, and so it works. It's like a good and the splitting up is fun because uh, it's really like little vignette. Like you could take those scenes out of this. Movie. They're like little shorts. They're little horror yeah. shorts. Mm-hmm. Like especially like Eddie at the pharmacy that was going my, downstairs. That was my least favorite one. Going downstairs and finding his yeah. mom there. Uh, yeah, that could be my least favorite. It one. might have just. I think it just went on for too long and. And it, I think it's like the last one too. So you're like, all right, all right. let's get there. It let's just get was there. a lot. I was like, all right. Yeah. So because uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the people at the townhouse realize that Bev has seen them all die. And yeah, so that's that kind of gets. A, that's a, not a book thing. That yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Because she, she stared into the Because, dead yeah, lights. she, book Bev is never captured by it. That's like, right. that's not a thing. That's so, not a thing. because she's captured in the film and she looked into the dead lights, which is like the lights in Pennywise's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Cosmology shit. She sees how all of them die. Mm-hmm. So, that's. Kind of so cool. that yeah gets them to stay long enough for Mike and Bill to get back and be like we got to take care of this. Yeah, yeah. And so they first go to the clubhouse that you know, their clubhouse from that first movie. Yeah. <sighs> this yeah, this is like a thing where it's like this clubhouse has always been here for us. 
Yeah, I did have kind of an issue with that because the clubhouse is like a really important part of the losers club and you don't. Is it it's in the not, book? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Because they smoked that thing out and Oh, trip. you're right. You said that. Yeah. And so, yeah, maybe they should have had a scene with it in the first movie. Maybe, I mean, maybe they did. Maybe and they, they did cut. in the director's cut. But that's why the, the clubhouse is how Ben really becomes part of the group is because he's so good at building stuff. That's why he's an architect, architect later yeah. in life. He builds them the clubhouse. And also I got to say when uh, going way back to when Mike's calling everyone, when it goes to the Hanscom architect place, it starts with like a more schlubby dude <laughs> oh, who's middle yeah. aged. And I don't know anyone who's watching this who doesn't know that Ben like ben gets, gets hot. hot. Yeah. But like in case they don't, it's a good fake it's out funny. because it's a dude who could have like been Ben grown up and then it's like what do you think Mr. Hanscom and he's sitting there telecoming oh in and he's fucking Glow Jay Ryan <laughs> damn Glow it man up. that guy is so hot yeah he is when they're carving those words <laughs> into his stomach and he's just like look at my look abs look at my beautiful abs close up on abs it's oh amazing my gosh, it's so funny oh I also like him cause his voice is kinda crinkly and that didn't stop him from putting in a good performance and my voice gets kinda crinkly sometimes nice so thanks, Jay. <laughs> you fucking handsome ass man. Stupid sexy Stupid, Jay. Sexy Jay Ryan. Um Yeah. Oh, but by the way, so um the I I should explain what the ritual of truth is like in the book if people are curious. Oh yeah, you want to? You wanna try to do that? Well, okay. The I mean the ritual itself is is easy enough to explain. It's just all like the weird shit in the finale that gets like I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, the ritual itself is like you and your enemy, I guess. You both open your mouths and you bite down on each other's tongues and you tell each other jokes until one person like lets go. I don't know how half of that makes sense logically it's, or physiologically. It's insane. What, then, how do you tell jokes when you're biting on a tongue? Because what? if I'm remembering correctly, Bill does it with Pennywise, but it's like what? it's like not literal. It's more of like a metaphorical biting of tongues, and they literally are. Like Richie like does impressions and impressions it to death. It's Fucking, okay. He literally is like doing his Irish cop voice at Pennywise until. Oh, it, like the Officer Krupke fucking. Yeah, yeah, it's all like, yeah. Wow. It's real weird. And they had, like, you couldn't, you couldn't film it as it is. Oh, it was would, the Irish cop a character in the book? Because he's in the miniseries. Yeah. He, like, yeah, comes yeah. Down he's like one of their buddies. Because he's always like, oh, you kids just fucking around in the Barrens. Man, these new movies made such good adaptation choices. <laughs> yeah, they, they did. Yeah, so that's what the ritual of Judd is. All right. Cool. Well, in this movie's version, they have to collect tokens, so they go back to this clubhouse, which is Again, a little it, it, jarring it, yeah, that they're like... I, I, for a second, was like, whoa, is there stuff I don't remember from the... I was like, is this... Uh, I, I was very confused. But no, they have to fill us in with a flashback with the kid actors showing them when Ben first built this. And is this the scene where they digitally made them look yeah, younger? Yeah, so apparently they de-aged the kids. The only, Did you notice it the second, the second time? Yeah, I didn't know that fact watching it the first time. You told me afterwards, so I'm looking for it the second time. I think it's the only one who I'm like, yeah, that could be digitally, is Finn. Because mm. he looks like a different person now. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks like a, a much older man. I, I said a very Beatles-esque look. He kind of has a John Lennon thing going on right now. And yeah, I think they... In that first movie, he looks more like Stranger Things season one kind of Finn. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that I could kind of tell. It helps that he has those big glasses, I think, mm, that yeah. magnify his eyes. They can get around with that. But uh, the other kids, I guess, you know, we met them in person briefly. And I know that they look older and then they don't look that way in this flashback scene. So it's a weird, I don't know. My brain just can't really rectify all that. Yeah. Especially like uh, Jeremy Ray Taylor, whose autographed picture to you is right behind you. It is right behind me. I made sure to hang it up in time for this episode. Because got, we got that autograph like two years ago. It was like right after was, the first one came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I 
Yeah, he was the first person I interviewed for Dead Meat. Yeah. I was like, no, I get to interview Ben because Ben's my favorite loser. I love Ben so much. Like, and he's so nice. I got to talk character. to him again after the premiere because mm-hmm. uh, his, his one of his buddies – uh, is is a fan, which is so super great. cool. So dude. yeah, I I made sure to hang this Thanks, up Jetty. before we did our review. Yeah, um, and he's uh, a very nice guy, but he looks so different does, in I that know. picture behind you compared to what he looks like now in person. It's like the experience of watching, um, like Harry Potter or Game of Thrones, where like you as you watch the show, the changes don't quite register, but then you go and look back at the first season or movie, and it's like, oh fuck, yeah, <laughs> they're little babies. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I guess there might have been some digital de-aging in here. Uh, but the scene, I feel like in this scene, um, felt like some of the actors were, like, rushing through their lines. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this flashback. I think scene. I think this is what people mean when they're like, too many flashbacks. Because it, it, it was, it's like a sweet scene, and I, I liked it, but... Yeah, there there is the inherent problem of well, why weren't they hanging out in here this whole time in the first movie if it's that important? And two, like, I, I don't know. The end result of this scene is them finding Stan's token together, right? And this also feels a little forced that his token is this shower it's cap, a shower cap that he when they were working on the clubhouse, his idea was for all of them to wear shower caps to keep spiders out of their hair. Yeah, which I thought was really funny. It's a funny reveal when uh, is it Richie? Who's... I think Richie's like, why would we wear it? Like, who's afraid of spiders? And it cuts, and all the other kids are wearing them already. Yeah, it's a funny <laughs> it's shot. Cute. It's a good visual yeah. joke. Um, I'm trying to remember. They have the scene in the first movie where they're cleaning Bev's bathroom together. Yeah, is he wearing one? In that is Stan wearing a shower Ooh, cap I don't in there? Remember. If he is, that's cool. If he's not, this seems random. This sure. clubhouse that is introduced out of nowhere, and then they're like, Stan loved his shower caps. We all, if there's one thing we know about Stanley Uris, it's that he loved those shower caps. That's his token. I would have loved to, I think, if, if I had to like streamline this, I would have maybe done, um, instead of the whole clubhouse scene. I would have made Stan's token something in his synagogue or yeah. something to do with that day. Um, and then that's when you get that flashback of that speech, which, you know, that comes at such a good time in this movie that there's like that trade off. Mm. But you get that whole speech and then, you know, that saves some time maybe for. Maybe they know. didn't because I think the synagogue scene from the first one is cut that's a deleted scene when he has his bar uh bar mitzvah and is given the speech and richie is the only oh, loser really? in attendance i believe uh or you know what there's a truncated version okay in the that's, final what, I, cut. that's yeah. what i thought but yeah, yeah there's a much longer scene with his speech in the original film see, a deleted okay. scene which maybe they used I think some they of that used, footage for this because i was finding myself wondering like wait is this from the f- i feel like this is from the first one but yeah maybe that was just a deleted scene but that yeah we i think maybe it could have worked if instead of the clubhouse flashback they just used that speech he mm-hmm. gives so after they have stan's token they're like now we have to split up and go find our own so that's when we get another each individual scene uh mike doesn't get one because he what was his token? Did the he... rock. The Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The rock that uh they used in the rock fight with a little bit of Henry Bauer's blood on it. Yeah. Uh he presents that to Bev at the end there when they're doing the ritual, but he doesn't have to go and collect it. I love him. He's in blood on it. I know, that's so great. Yeah, the only token they couldn't include in this is the inhaler. Inhaler, yeah. Because uh yeah, our Warner Brothers friend Sarah Beth was like, there were issues. I guess with it's mailing. legally weird. Yeah. <laughs> you can't right? just like mail inhaler. Makes sense. Yeah. So so yeah, it's uh, hunting for tokens. Bev going home to find Mrs. Kirsch there. Yes. Uh, the lovely Mrs. Kirsch. That's a fun scene with that actress, oh, yes. actor. Uh, doing... Joan Gregson. Ooh, nice. I think is, yeah. I'm like, I think that was her name. But yeah, she was at the event we went to and like did that whole scene for us. Yeah, we were brought into we got Mrs. To, like, Kirsch's house yeah. and she did the scene and with so us. And so we like ad-libbed with her and it was she a lot asked of fun. She Chelsea if Chelsea was still her daddy's little girl. Do you know what my father told me? No. He joined the circus. Oh, is that that picture yeah. up there? Yes. Sonny was always Daddy's little girl. Oh, that's that's good. Are you Daddy's little girl too? Um, yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. She did the staring thing to me. She stared you down, down dude. And for that long beat. 
and then like broke and mm-hmm. it's uh, that's such a good moment i'm a little sad it was in the trailer but it yeah. worked as a trailer yeah yeah and um, then we get the monster that, like yeah. we said, isn't... I did, like, before she was a monster, when she was just in the background blurry, yeah, and she, cute. like, runs she's off all weird. She's around, and <laughs> she's fun. just, like, naked for a second. Yeah. Um, you know I love my naked old ladies. Naked old ladies and horror is always fun. I love it, always. And it's funny, because I was actually just reading someone um, who was, like, I'm kind of over the, like naked women are scary thing and I'm like that's that. a valid I I've, totally that's a valid that. take on that mm-hmm. but then of also like older naked women ooh, is how terrifying. horrifying yeah no i mean dude it's not scary in fucking the visit i'll tell you that yeah no it's nice yeah <laughs> but uh it, it, I to- I so I so see that viewpoint, but at the same time, I always kind of love the chaos of like a naked old lady. <laughs> it's just always fun for me. Yeah. Personally. Uh, Bev during that process breaks open a floorboard, gets that uh, Hera's Winterfire yeah. postcard, but she can't remember who wrote it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she never knew who wrote it in oh, the first place. Okay, I wasn't sure if she found out. She, I think, even in the first movie, it's implied she thinks it was Bill. And then she, and that's then she, where remembers, she remembers. Oh, that. Bill wrote this. One. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ben goes to the school. I didn't. Care oh, wait. For- should we clarify what Mrs. So Mrs. Kirsch turns into like this giant like. I don't even know. It's like a giant Long lady. Limbed. Yeah. I don't know. It just, I thought it would be something with the, her dad or her. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It should have been dad. Yeah. It, yeah. There's another, yeah, scene that she has where she remembers him like spraying perfume all over I mean, her. Yeah. That's weird. It was so, yeah. Uh, I'm not, uh, I check out a little bit with Ben's scene when he goes to the school and he remembers a flashback of Bev uh, oh. during the summer school and, he like goes to kiss her and she's like i would never Ew, i would nasty. Ne- yeah and then she turns into fire she turns into like fucking ghost rider yeah and is like yeah what? your My hair, hair is, winter, is winter yeah i kind of like that she recites I, the poem i like that too but January, i did really yes. like watching uh sophia lillis like play pennywise's bev oh yeah 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 and he hides in the locker hilarious uh poster behind him oh my god that was it's like is it is it a new kids on the block it's gotta be sure but it's so funny yeah and then pennywise is there and we get a kiss me fat boy Mm -hmm. uh tim curry style oh my god duh that even register yeah he's like kiss Kiss me me fat boy yeah um but yeah the reason this one doesn't really do much for me is because ben already has his token he's kept it his whole life in his wallet we see it in the first scene Mm, when mike calls him he's got the yearbook that bev signed yeah and so going to the school just kind of feels like padding I guess it was mm. reminding him of, but yeah, I yeah, don't know. I, I get that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, Richie's. Yeah, you're so right. Cause <laughs> I, I remember thinking too, it was weird in like the architecture conference that he like had that with him. And then, yeah. then that kind of messes with the whole, they don't remember anything. So why? Oh, that's true. What too. is this thing that I have in my wallet? Does he remember her I guess and nothing he else? Bev and nothing else, I would assume. Yeah. Hmm. That kind of muddies all that for me. It does. It does. Richie's, as we briefly talked about earlier, his memory of uh, being at the arcade where we saw him playing in the first one. Uh, but this is by himself trying to like make a new friend and maybe yeah, more. Yeah, I think he but has a little crush. It's Henry Bowers' his cousin. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Damn, and he calls him he, mean things. Yeah, calls him gay, and Richie does he runs. Call him out. a hard F or no? Uh, I don't think. I think he does. Really? I don't know if he does it, but someone does. Oh, okay. In the movie, yeah, uh, towards Richie, I think, mm-hmm. and he runs out of that theater crying. He's so sad, and that's when we get the I know your secret. Oh my gosh! And we also so a lot of the monsters and stuff are different from the book like oh, what yeah. what freaks them out and oh, yeah, what it it's not like appears at. we don't have like a wolf man. we don't have there's like a, a few things that like mrs kirsch doesn't turn into the witch from hansel and grot that's like what <laughs> yeah it's more of like a i don't know what she is in this one but the one thing from the book i would have thought they would not do is the giant lumberjack statue that like stands over dairy i mean it's the paul yeah it's the paul bunyan and i just feel like that's the one where if i had to pick which one of these wouldn't they adapt for the screen it's the fucking lumberjack because there's 
it's such a weird i had a hard time even imagining it but no they have the fucking lumberjack i love great it. i, I think love it, it great it's he so... attacks young richie i think during uh yes. during the flashback yeah. and he's like tearing into the ground with and his... there's like bats coming out of his mouth and stuff oh, aren't there yeah. I, I i don't remember I specifically think, but i feel like i remember there being bats yeah, yeah, it's a cool scene. And then adult Richie sees Pennywise hanging out on that statue. That's the I know your secret mm-hmm. with the people in the background They're swaying. swaying. And the color grading changes. It's very weird. Oh, yeah. It's cool. I like Richie's. I like Richie's, Especially too. Especially the arcade scene where it lends into that. Yeah. Like, Richie's is maybe my favorite of the token quest. Yeah. I, I was trying to, like piece together why because the color grading looks like they took out all the yellows or all of the greens you know it's mm-hmm. like very specific it reminds me of the color grading on that one sh- that like ap bio show with pat and oswald oh, yeah. and, stuff. and i Glenn for Austin. a sitcom i hate i think it looks so weird <laughs> um but it's the same thing and i think it maybe has to do with later we have a very like warm colored scene where it's like richie and you know hmm some emotional payoff i'll say that ha- it's like very yellowy and gr- so i'm like maybe that's what they were going for yeah i don't know uh bill winds up in the pawn shop with stephen king because yeah. he's buying old silver he his old his bike, bike back, yeah. which uh they didn't hamper on too much in the first movie but enough for you to remember because in the miniseries is fucking yelling hi ho silver they have a they play that oh same my god with him song. and mike yeah it's the same <laughs> song from the chinese food place and it's just a sequence of him and mike just fucking around fucking around with that bike and bill's got his ponytail (laughs) that mini series it's so weird it's so weird but you know he gets the bike and i'm like oh that's his token no i guess it's not uh he just needed to get the bike back for reasons yeah the token is uh the the token is the ss georgie because he rides his bike Back to his old house where he sees living there now is this kid who we forgot to mention in the Chinese restaurant who walks up to Richie and is like, Richie, fun's about to begin, right? And Richie is like, <laughs> it's Pennywise. Yeah, You're it's Pennywise. Like, Fuck, Fuck you. you. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> and the kid is like, no, fun's about to begin. You, That's like a move or that's part it's of your bit. It's a line bit. from your bit. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's the kid who sat behind me in the theater. So funny. Fucking hilarious. Then Richie's like in the Chinese restaurant. Richie's like, uh, "Do you want an autograph?" And the kid's like, "No, I think I'm good." <laughs> and like the when uh, we saw it, we heard all the dialogue. When I saw it at the premiere, people kept laughing over lines. They didn't get to hear what I think was one of Bill Hader's funniest deliveries is when he realizes that the kid is not Pennywise, and then he looks up and he's like, "Those are your parents, huh?" And the parents <laughs> yeah. are like walking up. It's so great. But, uh, yeah, that kid who could have just been in that funny scene in the restaurant ends up being he's a character. Living, he's currently living in Bill's old house. Mm-hmm. And it's so great. I think it's such a funny runner where all these adults are like, little kid. It reminds me of fucking, it, it reminds me of Billy Madison. Yeah. Where he's grabbing that one kid and is like, don't you ever say that. Stay as long Stay as, as, as you long can. Stay as long as you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he basically is like, "Be careful, don't talk to the clown," because the kid is like, uh, "The kid finds him at the at drain the sewer, and where he gets this boat back." Yeah, yeah. After the little hands, oh, like yeah, a bunch yeah, of little hands, a bunch crawl, of little crawl, weird, crawl like to grab him. Hands. That looks cool. Yeah, because yeah. So <laughs> I think Bill is like, "If you ever hear voices in the sewer, don't talk to him." And the kid's like, "I don't hear voices, but I I do hear them from my sink or yeah, bathtub like Bev or, did. yeah, like mm-hmm. Bev did, yeah." Kids and clown voices, and he's like, "Get out of dairy!" Yeah, the kid's like, "I gotta go to I this festival." I have to festival. go to the thing. Yeah, <laughs> skateboards away. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Don't have a cow, man." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, yeah, we mentioned Richie's is the, or uh, Eddie's, I think is the last one. He goes to the, he pharmacy, goes to the pharmacy, gets his inhaler. That's his uh, token. Goes in the basement. His mom's strapped in. Uh, or this is a flashback. Yeah. To- of when he was younger one time, he went in the basement, found his mom not actually strapped in, but it seemed like it. And then Lucy just stole Pennywise. Oh she gosh, literally she has did. Pennywise in her, her mouth and uh, stole our Pennywise keychain. <laughs> she was like that's mine now uh and yeah then there's a is it a, the leper it's something. it's the leper okay, yeah it is the leper it's Javier Botet again okay yeah yeah definitely and I wouldn't be surprised if he played the Mrs. Kirsch monster too the just, Mrs. Kirsch monster is all CG right but maybe he had some oh, motion maybe, tracking just looking at the proportions yeah. yeah 
Uh, and this establishes that Eddie is a coward because he he runs away from his mom and li- mm-hmm. lets this thing get his mom and stick its nasty tongue in her mouth. And uh, but then he also no because he he strangles it. Well, that's when oh, he that's goes when back he's an as adult. an adult. Okay, goes there. Good his thing mom's you saw not this there. Twice. I know, right? And the thing appears, and that's when he starts to strangle it and realize great face acting by James Ransone, realizing that oh, strangling this has an effect. I'm doing because it. I believe it. Although there is that weird it's funny but it's oh that cut with the music the mute the needle drop what's what song is it i forget i don't even know it's uh some 80s oh no it's it's ballad, uh, power baby. ballad <laughs> yeah it's a song that i would expect to hear in strangers pray at night you know <laughs> yeah uh but yeah because he strangles it and thinks that it's good and then it just vomits bile into his face it's slow motion loud it's music so drop. bizarre yeah it's so abrupt I don't even know if I like it or not. I don't not. know if I like it either. That whole scene is kind of weird, and I feel like it's too long. Another movie, I would love that thing, like, sticking his tongue in his mom's mouth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is so fucked up. But, like, in this, I'm I'm like, I don't know. It just feels like maybe another a separate movie. Yeah. Because it's so, like, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I have, I have a love-hate relationship with that that scene he now covered in bile returns to the townhouse and uh just storms past uh ben and bev who are sitting there on the stairs to go wash himself that's when bev all that's when she's like i think bill wrote this for me and ben's like oh my (laughs) god it's literally yeah (laughs) this is where you can see his heart breaking and yeah exactly the exact frame that it happens Richie has decided he wants to get the fuck out of there, so Ben has to go talk to him. And then when Bill gets back, that's when the skateboard falls down the stairs. Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, oh, and the skateboard has the blood dripping upward from it. It's a cool effect, and the skateboard says uh, something like, you won't be there for him either. Because Bill's whole thing is he feels guilty over Georgie's death. It's the guilt over Georgie and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he realizes that it's going to go after Skateboard Kid, and he runs off on his own to the Canal Days Festival. Yeah. So while Bill runs off to save that kid, we have all the stuff in the townhouse with Henry Bowers. Mm -hmm. He's up there. Yeah, we kind of talked about. Yeah, he stabs uh, Eddie in the face, like right in the side of the cheek. It's like in the first one when he stabs. Is it Eddie who stabs Pennywise through the head? Like in the. Oh, I don't mouth? remember. Oh, yeah. With yeah, the Oh, no, no. Bev does with the rod, right? Oh, it's right? Bev, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Eddie gets stabbed right in the fucking cheek. That's so gross. I guess, though, one of the better places? That's just skin. Yeah. He covers it up, and he's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, but then yeah, he stabs Henry. Henry gets away, though, and is, like, <laughs> running out the door uh, <laughs> and gets back in the car with Vic and drives off. Yeah. Or not Vic, uh, Patrick. Mm-hmm. So yeah, all oh Richie though also tries to escape. He hops out the uh, window upstairs and drives off because he mm. wants to get out of there. But he stopped when he sees the synagogue and remembers Stan's uh, bar mitzvah speech. Yeah, which is pretty bitching. He takes the mic and is like, "I'm a loser." Yeah, he starts singing. Fuck back. you. <laughs> my, yeah, and then and Richie like stands. I I love that whole scene and I love that. That moment, I think, keeps him from leaving and it makes is, yeah. Stan feel like more of a presence in this half of the story, which I think is is such a, a good call and I think is a big improvement for me on the original material because I, I think the book, you don't get as much of a sense of Stan being super important to the group, especially, you know, when they're adults because it's, you know, the focus isn't on him He's like, absent, yeah. I don't know how much, I don't remember how much he comes up, but I think the movie really drives home that, no, he was part of the group and like he's more of a presence in this than I would have expected. And I appreciate that there's a scene where it's like, yeah, he's like he's not physically here, but he's still here. And he's a reason that like I, I, could, I feel brave enough to stay or I feel motivated to stay. Yeah, so. it keeps Richie right. to stay. And then it ends up saving Mike's life because uh, Mike's, while waiting for everyone else in the library, gets attacked by Henry. Mm-hmm. And Henry has him on the ground and is about to stab him, but he gets fucking axed in the back of his head by yeah. Richie. Yeah. Who and then also throws up. It is it is cool then that that sequence of events, like if, you know, Stan's funeral hadn't been happening, then maybe Richie wouldn't have stayed and therefore saved. Oh, is that why his name's on the side? 
of the synagogue when Richie drives by as an yes, adult? Yes, it oh, is. Okay. It's either his funeral or it's like a tribute, you know, like remembering. Oh, I wasn't sure if he was, when he saw that sign, it was from the past, like at his bar mitzvah, but okay. Yeah, I think it's like a remembrance thing. But again, I've only seen it once. I don't remember. Sure, but, but that, that would make sense. I, I, yeah, so then I do like that idea that it's like Stanley's presence in that way then is able to effectively domino effect Mike. We were able to save Mike's life. Yeah. Okay. That's, I like that. And that's uh, ties into the, the end of the movie when they get letters from Stan and he wrote to them explaining why he did what he did. Uh, he couldn't bring himself to come back. Mm -hmm. So he says he took himself off the board. Mm -hmm. Like he knew that they needed a hundred percent success rate to accomplish whatever they needed to do. And so instead of being a, uh, you know, someone absent, he just took himself out. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's a thing in the books at all. I think it's more, the, um, if I'm remembering correctly, it's more of like, he's just so fucking scared mm -hmm. and that, which is a great setup because it's like, Oh my God, this must be some yeah. fucked up shit. This guy can't even deal with it. Like, but I, I like the movie setting it up as like, he remembered every he like cares so much and it just knew yeah because especially in the tub he's having flashbacks to making that promise with bill there's that shot of uh uh young bill's actor i forgot his name uh like walking towards the camera mm -hmm. it's really dreamy yeah but then it's so what he remembered everyone i guess uh like because yeah he has that memory in the tub yeah but yeah i don't know again that's <laughs> all muddled. very muddy it is yeah um but no, I, I like that. Yeah, this version, it's him just like, no, I'm going to I'm going to help them by doing this, even though it might not feel that way. But, yeah. Yeah. So the rest of the losers are all together in the library. But Bill is not. He's run off to this carnival yeah, and yeah. he follows that kid into a fun house, which if you happen to be in L.A., I don't know if they did this anywhere else. It was uh, just Hollywood. OK, yeah. so the the ex, the big it, it experience experience, the it experience chapter mm -hmm. two. Uh, in Hollywood, I was uh, astounded by how exact it was because we did the experience first, then we saw the movie. And it was like, oh, oh this that's is... the fun house we went through. Yeah, the spinning to the thing, point where the I clowns. asked next time we were with people from Warner Brothers, I was like, did they just disassemble that from the movie and like put that? And they're like, no, we just built and a new one. Rebuilt it, yeah, because the the swinging the outside clowns, is the same and everything. The outside, so cool. the mirror room inside, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It was cool. Yeah, so he's he's Bill's chasing skateboard kid through this mirrored maze, and there's flashing lights warning here. Yeah, and at the end of this movie, I feel so bad for photosensitive people. How can they even see movies? You know, that sucks. It sucks. Yeah, I I think that's why I don't know if, if theaters are finally starting to do this, but like like you know or sensory. Um, I forget what they call them. I'm just blanking on like what they refer to those screenings as. Yeah, sensory, like sensory something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Yeah. Those people should be able to see those movies too, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he. It's a thing, you know, trapped with a plane of glass between him and the kid, and then the kid and it, Pennywise, who starts slamming <laughs> his face against the glass yeah. after a big old after lick he, like, tongue licks thing, like the glass. <laughs> Yeah, eventually yeah. he breaks through and he fucking eats that kid, There's dude. Blood everywhere. After that kid, when he first sees Bill, he's like, "Leave me alone!" I was like, "Oh my god, yeah." Which, yeah, fair. yeah. <laughs> Bill's weird. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, now Bill is incensed and decides he wants to stop Pennywise for himself. Yeah. I will say this is the stretch of the movie where I was feeling the runtime a little bit. That's fair. If you're gonna feel it at any point, this, it's this at this point. Stretch where it's everyone kind of like going back and forth in and out of the townhouse, mm -hmm. and this is when I think, like after we saw it, I I said this parts of this felt like a TV show like like an episode in a tv show and not a movie because it just felt so i can't put my finger on why but fair enough this, this is, is where i was getting a little antsy is this middle part well uh that's probably because so bill runs off to Nebolt house and the rest of them are like he's probably going to Nebolt house so they meet him there and i checked my my clock at this point there was 50 minutes left to the movie mm -hmm. and it's two hours and 50 minutes long so of course after two hours you're going to feel a little bit of the runtime. It's two hours and 50 minutes. Isn't it 2.47? Oh, my God. I think it's 2.47. It's, it's, That's uh, so crazy. Quarter hour shy of three. But, 
yeah, so when they get to Niebold House, there's still almost an hour left to this boy. And but it's the best hour of the movie. You think so? Yeah. The end. Just the end. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. I do like like Richie's token quest. I like the a lot of the middle stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, I do agree. That I think that this is the second act second to third act break. Yeah. And I think that near the end of the second act, it's like, all right. But they get to Niebold House and then they have a series of adventures inside. There's a great moment before they go inside where it's like, Richie said it best. And he's like, I don't want to die. Yeah. You're, we're lucky we're not measuring dicks. Let's kill that fucking clown. Let's kill yeah, that, let's fucking kill clown. that fucking clown. It's a, it's a good like, yeah, yeah. fuck yeah moment uh, where they're all like losers stick together. Mm-hmm. So it's like a couple of series of adventures. The first one is in the house itself where they get separated and that's when J Ryan's abs are getting carved oh gosh, into. It's so funny. <laughs> Cause yeah, you have in the first one, it's the, uh, it's Henry mm-hmm. in uh, again. This is why I'm a little sad that we don't get Henry being Henry in this one, you know, so fucking scary, cause Henry yeah. in that first one is scary. I, I think, I mean, that character in general is really disturbing. All of, all the bullies in that book are fucked up and scary. And that scene where he's carving words into Ben's stomach is like really dark. And yeah, like I, that character's so fucking just, you know. Yeah, because isn't at that point the other bullies are even like, dude. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> dude, this is weird and fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, yeah, you just get like, oh man, just one little push. And that guy's just full blown, you know, crazy. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so this is it's Pennywise doing it, and it's Jay Ryan just like ah <laughs> lifting up his shirt, it's just rippling abs. It's beautiful. It's very funny. Uh, um, and then in the other room, you got Bill, Richie, and Eddie getting attacked by Stan's head. Yes, I love this. Which becomes, I'm pretty sure, an it. Or I'm sorry, in a thing reference. It, it has to be an homage to the thing. Just look at the shit. Just like the head grab from the thing. Yeah. It's like it's shot from the back and silhouetted in a way to where it looks just like it. Like it, it is. It definitely is, and it's crawling. And it would make around. sense because they they're kids who grew up in the '80s. And Ooh yeah. They would be, that's something they'd be freaked out by. Yeah, for that, sure. That to me feels almost like a nod to, you know, the books. It's they're afraid of movie monsters like the wolf man they're, yeah. yeah they're yeah, kids the from like the 50s and shit so they got like a werewolf and oh yeah it makes sense that they would be f- afraid of something like the thing and definitely yeah, i like that yeah stan's head is crazy run around uh it almost kills richie and again eddie is shown to be too afraid to do anything he stands in the corner while bill has to help yeah. him out uh, until he gets stabbed the fuck by ben uh, when they reunite, Ben stabs the shit out of that head, but mm-hmm. it gets to crawl away and laugh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they all kind of yell at Eddie. But then Eddie, you know, Eddie's like, I am I was scared. And like, he really is in that moment. Like, you see the little kid. And then Bill just realizes this is what it wants. It's okay. Like, mm-hmm. we understand. Yeah. It's sweet. They go down another layer to where it's like the water that they have to wade through. And Bev gets pulled down. No, by... they well, they have to go down the well. Yeah, that uh, that they went down before. Yeah, that yeah, Henry so they fell go down, down the well. Cetera, yeah, yeah, now they're in like the sewers, pretty much. Which is where the deadlights and stuff happen. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of water here. The Bev gets pulled down. This is the part where I'm like, all right, let's let's go because we already had adventures upstairs, and I know you're going deeper. So this middle one doesn't seem that important to me it's more of eddie being like i can't do this mm-hmm. but them being like you have to mm-hmm. uh because then they go another layer deeper down a like a weird little door which that's from the books i forgot oh, yeah. all about it until it was happening in the i mean it's, it's a scary it's, it's like a manhole but... cover but they they all climb down there i i do like the moment where bev gives eddie the rod and it's like this kills monsters mm-hmm. if you believe it mm-hmm. yeah yeah so now they're down deeper and they get to where it crash landed yeah, it was millions like of some years annihilation ago. <laughs> it is. Feelings. It's very annihilation. Mm-hmm. It's cool. It's like this just impact zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they go inside there and they start to do the ritual where they put in all their tokens. Mm-hmm. They burn that shit up. Yeah, they burn them in like the little leather bucket. Yeah, that, that leather Mike's bucket. Mike's been carrying around. And apparently, Mike, yeah, tried to like 
scrape off or erase one side of it that it shows that the original ritual failed or yep. something yeah it, yeah because uh they do it and the big the three balls of light which are like a thing the deadlights they like circle down and they come in and then it, the, the big red balloon inflates, yeah. out, uh, inflates out of the uh mm-hmm. the ritual thing and pennywise is there and he's like ask them Ask Mike why it failed. And it's, uh, yeah, that fourth side that he scratched out showed that they did the ritual and it failed and it killed them all. Yeah. And Mike was and like, Mike kept that from all of them. He didn't because tell them. He, and this is what I think is like such a good part of his performance is he's like, look, I had to do something to get you guys back to, we, you know, we'll figure out a way to defeat it. But I, yeah, wasn't... they didn't believe enough. We do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, they end up getting separated again with Big Scary. Now he's the Is spider. Is he gigantic? It. He's the big old spider. It yes. now, but it looks it doesn't look like a big fucking regular spider like in the miniseries. It's his Pennywise head mm-hmm. on a big like arachnid crab. Yeah, looking. and he still has like the clown like legs, but they're just spider. Like, yeah, he still is in a costume. It's very I think cool. it's the best thing iteration of this yeah. that they could do. Uh, R- Richie and Eddie are split up and they redo the doors, mm-hmm. which I'm not sure how I feel about. It's such a good gag from the first one when they see the three doors where it's not scary, scary, very scary. I guess it's fine that they redo it. I think it's just funny on a level of like, <laughs> cause it- the first time he's clearly trying to fuck with them, but doing it again is like, oh no, he's ultra fucking with us. Like, is it all going to be the same? Like, yeah, is it going to be even different? Richie's yeah, trying they're to all piece just it together. Yeah, yeah. I, so I thought that was kind of like, no, he's fucking with us, and they open the very scary ones, the legs. Uh, I guess the only reason that I had a little bit of an issue with it is because it comes so close after Stan's body comes out of the fridge, which is just like when, oh, when Pennywise, Pennywise came, came out, out, of out of the fridge, fridge in the first one. Yeah. And so they did the fridge thing in this one. I was like, oh, they're redoing that. And then, like, just moments later, they're doing this again. I'm like, what is this, Force Awakens? Like, it's the same beats. (laughs) But it is funny here because when they go, it's like, he's fucking with us. He's not fucking with us. Let's do the not scary. And it's the little puppy that Richie had joked earlier, I hope, his true form's a cute little puppy, Pomeranian. And that's what it is. the little Pomeranian. And then he's like, what does he yell at it? He's like, you you bitch, I know your game or something like that. (laughs) Yeah, just calls his dog a bitch. Calling a dog a bitch is hilarious. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, (laughs) Oh, yeah. And he, like, sits for them. It does a little trick. It's very cute. It's so cute until it turns into, like, a nasty. Another thing looking thing. It is gross. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of looks like the the last form of the thing that gets grenaded. (laughs) So that's their adventure. Ben and Bev have a great little thing. They run off and then are like thrown separately down these chasms that uh, formulate. And Ben lands on his back in the clubhouse, which begins to fill with dirt. Mm -hmm. And Bev lands in the bathroom stall from the first one where we saw her getting teased. And that begins to fill with blood. And so they're both in these enclosed places that are uh, filling up and threatening to suffocate them. And uh, it's not until they can hear each other and Ben starts saying the poem. Yeah. Yeah. And then she realizes that he wrote it. And then she opens the door of the stall and is able to like grab him and save him. Yeah. It's a really cool shot of just like the space happening because it's like she sideways kicks open the door and then it's now she's reaching down into the clubhouse to save him. Yeah. I like that a lot. It's cool. It's nice. Mm -hmm. And they don't kiss there because it's gross and they're covered in blood Mm -hmm. and they got to get back to help their friends. Uh, Bill's solo adventure is oh him i loved this getting uh he winds up underwater and he like can't break under it's it's like he's under it's ice, like ice yeah. very scary when he finally comes up he's in his flooded basement from yeah. that scene in the first one and uh it's creepy eddie or uh creepy georgie mm-hmm. and it's basically it's you know it's another iteration of uh you know it's your fault that i die but this time it's the extra reveal that he he kind of prods him into admitting that he could have gone out to play with Georgie, but he was faking sick because he didn't want to go out and play that day. Yeah, he just didn't want to, so and he that said he was sick. compounds the guilt that Bill has felt this whole time because he lied to his little brother, and he's been carrying that with him th- this whole time, thinking, like, he lied, and it was his fault that his brother died. You lied, you and lied, I died. died. Yeah. yeah. Guilt over Georgie and all that 
stuff is like my favorite parts of that story because that to me is like what the story's about. Mm -hmm. Um, But he then he runs into his past self like it's bill well he's there in between that yeah it's it's oh creepy that's Georgie right it's yelling it's, at young bill right. mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and uh yeah creepy georgie he drowns creepy georgie yeah which is kind of symbolic of like letting that go and admit like realizing that it's not his fault yeah and then he turns to his younger self and is like this wasn't your fault. Like, you don't need to feel bad because lo- you didn't want to go out and play. Like, that doesn't make you a bad brother. Yeah, that line of like, what, it's your fault because you just didn't want to go out and play in the rain one day? Like, it's not your fault. Yeah, I, I loved this scene a lot. It's very good. Then he fucking shoots his past self <laughs> in the head. <laughs> yeah, just like his younger self did to the fake Georgie right. in the sewer in the first one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I really I liked all that a lot. It was very good. Very good thematic stuff here. Mm-hmm. I guess Richie and Eddie's is more of like a funny bit. Mm-hmm. But it's nice that they're together because it's uh, they're about to not be because yeah. after this and this was a this was one thing where I was like, oh, Mike doesn't get anything to do. He's just mm. hanging out, hiding from Pennywise clown. They all regroup and he's just there. Yeah. Um. The Pennywise. <laughs> oh, I think Pennywise goes to attack one of them and Richie hits him with a rock and he starts throwing rocks at him like a rock fight. And then Pennywise turns his deadlights on and Richie like. He just, oh, <laughs> yeah. just snaps. I, I don't know. So yeah. Funny. And they're like, I don't know. Bill Hader just rolled his eyes up or what? And then it's like a longer shot and his legs are like really like just collapsed oh, in on themselves. It looks like a Venture Brothers, gar- like when, <laughs> yeah, like okay. when the uh, Grand Inquisitor is talking, he's like, "Oh, he's hurting, hurting me in my Jonesies or whatever." <laughs> he says, "It's uh, yeah, his legs are doing some funny shit." Yeah, and uh, Pennywise begins to raise him up with his deadlights, and that's when Eddie comes to the rescue with his monster killing spear. Yeah, he spears Pennywise like right in the mouth. Yeah, it's cool. It's real cool. I love the. I don't know what the like because it, if it was CGI, it looked amazing. Just like him stumbling around with the rod sticking out of his mouth, mm-hmm. I thought it looked so good because the mouth is kind of like flopping. It it just something about it to me looked so creepy and good. But then he fucking. Was he like swipe at him with one of his it lobster? Comes claws? out through his uh chest. It's the standard like. Richie is st- or uh, Eddie is standing there. He's like, I got him. Yeah. I got him. I got him, Richie. And then stabbed through the back out the front. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You hate to see it. You hate to <laughs> see it. Um, And this is when, so they all basically, and I'm going to speed it up a tiny bit because sure. we're going on two hours. Yeah. Uh, it's a long movie. <laughs> it's a very long movie. Uh, They all, like, except for Eddie, they all stand in a circle and they like basically realize that if they taunt Pennywise, it'll just, it it loses his. If they tell him he's not scary. Yeah. They're like, you're just a dumb clown. You're just an old lady. Yeah. Like you're nothing. You're nothing. There, both times I saw it, I'm not sure. Does Richie call him a butt fucking clown? They're all calling him a clown, but there's one time we're like, (laughs) that's weird. Oh Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's been like coming from Richie. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that's what he says, but the second time I was listening for it and after he said the line, I was like, I still think he kind of said butt fucking clown, huh. which is weird. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the, he like starts to shrink mm-hmm. out of fear. He like and, deflates. And he looks, I'm the eater of worlds. Yeah. I'm the eater of worlds. That's what he says in the book, man. That's yeah. what he, ex- it explains what he, and that's during the ritual of Chewed. Is and, that when the turtle comes into play in the book? Yeah. Okay. So here's what's going on in the book. <laughs> they do that. So it's, it's Richie and Bill are like in the macroverse. They basically are transported to like the macroverse, which is just like this like negative space. It's hard to explain because it's really weird. Um, and they are talking to essentially the deadlights. It's just this inconceivable form of Pennywise that like we can't fathom, which is why they had to change it for the movie because <laughs> how can you film something like that? But then that's when it is like, yeah, I'm the eater of worlds. I've been here forever and you're nothing to me. And I, I thrive off fear because it tastes good. And mm. then that's when they see this turtle, <laughs> this giant turtles floating around. And Bill recognizes this as this like force that he has kind of been sensing the whole story because he's like, they're always saying stuff about the turtle and there's turtles all over that first movie too. They hint at it. Mm-hmm. I guess the turtle is the 
being that created the universe and it created life or it created the universe on accident because it got a stomach ache and threw up and it just acts it just was like oops i created a universe and i guess it who is basically the turtle's counterpart it's like good v evil or not good v evil it's more like um dark versus light yeah i'd say so Mm because the turtle's pretty passive he's not like trying to really do anything good he's just kind of hanging out but it like resents the turtle for creating life and producing you know making things because it just thrives on emptiness and darkness and nothingness and yep all right and then they realize that then the turtle is like i can't really do much i'm a turtle but there is this other force that's kind of helping you out and then that force is basically god and god is the one who like helps <laughs> I'm re- trying to remember it as best as I can. Oh, wow. All it is. Right. This is some like weird world building Stephen King shit where like that universe with like the turtle and shit is like we're talking Dark Tower and yeah. like, it, it just is all like this Stephen Sounds King like universe. Um, yep. Cool. And that's why they had to change it for the <laughs> movie. Yeah. And we just get like visual references to turtles in yeah. the movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here they just bully it. <laughs> yeah, they just bully it <laughs> into to submission, death. and it becomes an adorable little baby Pennywise it's so with a flat little it's face a, yeah. that's like deflated. Then they reach in and grab its heart, which that does um, happen. Mm-hmm. Bill grabs Pennywise's heart. That's part of the book, at and least. they all crush it together. Yeah, yeah, yep. And that's the end of Pennywise. But then the whole place is. Getting yeah, and, they and, and Richie runs back to Eddie and it's like we did it, we did and, it Eddie's and Eddie's dead, dead. and he's Man. like we can no we can get him out of here guy he just needs and it's fucking ugh, they just have to be like heartbreaking no, he's dead. It's, it's the beginning of the tears it's the beginning of yeah like just and then, crying yeah, for the they, whole rest of the movie they get out of there the house implodes I always love seeing the houses right next to Nebel because I'm like what are their lives what are they right? thinking yeah it's funny because the book all of Derry collapses oh, fuck. the whole thing wow because dairy is so intrinsically tied to pennywise that oh, when pennywise shit. dies like the whole town just goes do they just get out of there in time like do they escape city limits or something yeah i think it's yeah wow okay uh they go and wash themselves off in the the rock quarry mm-hmm. where they swam in the first one and this is more tears because they're swimming there and i think ben is like they're all like sad you know stan would have hated this and then they start like yeah, talking Eddie. about, or I'm sorry, Eddie would have hated this. And they all start joking about like how germaphobic Eddie was. And like, he was a great guy. Right. Right. Richie. And Richie is Richie, not who's usually going to crack a joke or who would be the character cracking a joke is like, so- like just sitting there He's sobbing. Just sobbing. Oh, it's you so. You can't even like make, make it. It's heartbreaking. Better. And then they all huddle around him and hug him like they do for Bill in that first movie. And this to me is like, We talk about the turtle and stuff and all these representations of the turtle. We're like, is the turtle going to be in this movie? And to me, I don't know. It almost looks like they're making like a turtle kind of shape over him because they're giving him a protective shell. And that's kind of what the turtle is, I think. The turtle is the friends we made (laughs) along the way. I said that after the movie and then you said that and it just (laughs) like, well, (laughs) thanks. (laughs) I thought it was a sweet idea. (laughs) <laughs> was the friends we made along the way yeah uh ben and bev kiss underwater mm-hmm. that's sweet um they i think they they head home they see a reflection of their younger selves oh, in the mirror yeah. with eddie and uh Stan yeah with them. and basically the whole like then it's kind of fast forward right mm-hmm. and bill gets a letter that had been it was like stan wrote it before he died and was I think it was like a delayed. Mm-hmm. Like, I think his wife was like, "Oh, I got instructions to not give these to yeah. you guys until yeah." Because it's like if you're reading this, you succeeded. Right. Good work. Yeah. Uh, Mike gets to leave Derry finally, and mm-hmm. then there's just a montage of like, yeah, Ben and Bev are together on a boat on with a, a dog. boat with a dog. Best life. Yeah. Those two hot ass people. Yeah. Christ Almighty. I know. <laughs> yeah. They did it. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, man, you see. They're reading, he's like reading Stan's letter. Oh, and by the way, when we cut to the, like, this, like, future, um, Bill is, like, writing 
a book, presumably, oh, yeah. and the stuff he's typing on the screen is like my favorite passage from it. Mm-hmm. And that I was like, oh man, if I'm I like was already really feeling stuff, and then I saw that passage, which I think is like some of the most beautiful writing in that book, let alone any like Stephen King anything. It's so good. Um, well, yeah, during Stan's letter where it mentions like something about being who you are it's a shot of richie and we had earlier seen i think young richie carving he car- something r plus r and then plus, we don't and then see what you don't it see is. and then it's the reveal where he's recarving it as r he's plus car- e. recarving the e and oh, 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 so oh man i know it's so sweet and oh, then it's like no. the end of that letter is all the kids reading part of it mm-hmm. as they <sighs> ride their bikes that's, that's the that's the thing, man. That's the thing is like for all the problems we've brought up with like weird shit, like plot and just issues we have with pacing or whatever. Like then it hits the emotions so hard that like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> after that, after those last like ten minutes, I don't give a fuck what they got wrong before because holy oh, shit, so sweet. And oh good. man. Yeah. So yeah. That's that movie. That is hit chapter two, which we talked for nearly two hours about. Oh man. Uh, have fun editing this, my love. I uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you think about the movie? Did you like it as much as us? More? About the same? Let us know if we missed anything. I'm sure we did since we're working off of memory, but mm-hmm. I think seeing it a second time helped a lot for mm-hmm. my plot I regurgitation. I would see it again, man. That's the thing. I would fucking see it again. It's an easy watch. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. the stuff that you feel like is a little off, it's an easy watch of a movie. It's funny as fuck yeah They're i guess so once you funny. get past the beginning <laughs> yeah exactly you just gotta get past that fucking opening scene and uh it, then you get lots of laughs yeah and some fun spooks and uh it's good yeah uh yeah this is a bonus episode yeah this is a bonus episode. so you're fucking welcome <laughs> <laughs> we took the time to do this but <laughs> let uh we can't always see the new movies when they come out. We're sorry that we missed so many scary stories. Midsummer, we never got to do a podcast. On I that. I do at some point. We will do. We a will when review. that comes out. It's it's gonna have release. to be when it comes out. Yeah. But uh, this was one that we could not miss. Potential to be the biggest horror movie ever, mm-hmm. uh, box office wise. So hopefully it it as, as successful as its first one, because it's good stuff. Yeah. But thank you for listening. Follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Careback, C R E B E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, DeadMeatStore.com. Yep. Uh, one more, you know, uh, potential conflict of interest thing. We did get a lot of cool shit from Warner Brothers, <laughs> and they ferried us around LA and gave us cool things and had us meet the cast. So thank you, Warner Brothers, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we were honest in our appraisal of the movie. But thank you, Warner Brothers, for all the cool shit. Yeah. Uh, Until next time, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast.